मैम मैंने लिंक शेयर कर दिए पार्टिसिपेंट्स को लाइव लिंक ओके वी विल स्टार्ट द मोमेंट विभाष जॉइंट्स फारू यस मैम गुड मॉर्निंग विभा सर गुड मॉर्निंग अखिल गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग विभा हेलो डॉक्टर विभाष गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग पाल मैम विभाष वी आर ऑलरेडी लाइव एज वी बीन वेटिंग ऑन लाइव वी हैव गिवन द लिंक एंड इफ पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर जॉइनिंग आई थिंक वी बेटर बिगिन आई होप यू आर ओके विद दैट यस यस परफेक्टली फाइन Yes, Parul, you can take over. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Good morning to one and all present here today. Respected IQAC Director Professor K Lata, our guest for the day, Dr. Vibhash Kumar, fellow colleagues, and dear participants, I, Parul Yadav, on behalf of Ramanujan College, welcome you all to this two-week online refresher program in Commerce and Management. Ramanujan College is a University of Delhi college running 16 courses in different subjects in humanities commerce and science streams it is also the study center for the students of the non collegiate women's education board university of delhi and the indira gandhi national open university the college also runs several professional courses ramanujan college is a premier institute of the university of delhi and has been accredited grade a++ by national assessment and accreditation council nat we at ramanujan college emphasize the holistic development of personality meaningful exposure to real world and inculcating practical skills amongst the students apart from ensuring academic excellence this refresher course is being organized by the teaching learning center and department of management studies ramanujan college the main objective of the mission is to facilitate teacher training by constituting teaching learning centers in various institutions of higher education in our country the teaching learning centers offer faculty induction programs for new newly recruited faculty and faculty development programs for teachers with experience who wish to update the field of knowledge and expertise and skill with the latest available research resources and technology keeping in view the immense benefits and the reach of online courses in the present academic set, setup the teaching learning center ramanujan college is offering this two week online refresher program in commerce and management for faculty members and research scholars for higher education in our country 
I will take few minutes to briefly apprise you about the rules and regulations of this two week online refresher program. Starting, I would like to say that kindly make sure that you enter the same email address as you provided in the Google form used for registration and the one that you access routinely. Make sure that all the spellings are correct. Please also ensure to note the password. In case you forget it, we shall not be able to rectify it in the near future. Also, you will be given daily assignments and quizzes as well as activities. Those activities and quizzes have to be finished by the given deadline as it would be indicated on the portal. Participants will also have to score a minimum required marks set for assignment, quiz and activities in order to become eligible to get the certificate. Also, you will have to ensure that you fill up the feedback forms and other forms which are being requested by the organizing committee. Filling up of daily feedback form is compulsory and participants at the same time should attend all the online sessions. So the program is self-paced as well as we are having some live sessions from our experts in different fields. So all of you are requested to attend those online sessions also. Uh, please ensure that there is no internet problem or network issue at your end. We might not be responsible and will, will not be able to take care of that. The final test will be held on the last day of the refresher program. It is compulsory for all of you to attend and there will be no exemption which will be given for it. In case you've got any problems, please write a mail to us. Only email would be taken as a mail to revert to your queries. No other means for handling queries will be entertained. And it is compulsory for all of you to join the Telegram group. FAQs, the updated schedule and other related information shall be posted on the Telegram group as and when the need would arise. Uh, so these are some of the points that all of us have to keep in mind uh, because we've enrolled for this refresher program and for smooth functioning of it. Uh, before I invite our guests to address the participants, I would like to invite Professor K. Lata, Professor at Ramanujan College, and also managing the office as Internal Quality Assurance Cell Director of Ramanujan College. May I please invite you, ma'am, to address the participants. Thank you, Parul. I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, our guest for the day, uh, Dr. Vibhash, uh, the members of uh, the organizing committee, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, Dr. Abhishek Kumar Singh, Dr. R.P. Yadav, uh, the convener, Dr. Ramya Jain, our technical heads without whom we cannot actually function, uh, Dr. Nikhil Rajput, Dr. Vipin Rati, and our non-teaching staff who are always there to help us, especially the IT support and the other background work that the non-teaching staff do. And uh, the program director, Dr. Parul. I, at the outset, I welcome all the dear participants and the fellow colleagues to this inaugural of the refresher course organized by Department of Management Studies and the Teaching Learning Center, Ramanujan College. It gives me immense pleasure to inaugurate this refresher course organized by, especially because it is organized by Department of Management Studies under the prestigious Teaching Learning Center of Ramanujan College. We have actually lost count of the number of programs organized under the TLC, maybe Parul can help us with that, um, at TLC Ramanujan College. And we have, uh, yeah, Parul, do you know the number? Uh, Ma'am, we've held approximately 160 programs. 160, yeah. Uh, so this college has contributed to the well-deserved uh, promotions of thousands of teachers, the programs that have been organized by TLC Ramanujan College across the country. Having said that, the real contribution that uh, TLC Ramanujan has done is the exposure, exposure that the teachers get to the various new technological softwares and, and uh, you know, the related uh, programs that we keep organizing to upgrade our technical knowledge increasing knowledge horizon for all teachers across departments, providing in-depth knowledge uh, from experts across the globe, awareness of interrelated disciplines, 
general exposure to environmental issues and uh, you know sustainability issues and various um, things that have come up in the new uh, syllabus structure like uh, because of NEP and especially we do this in our induction programs and we have we have included all maximum possible things under our TLC uh, Ramanujan College. I welcome all of you to this uh, refresher course. I welcome you to a very enriching experience here. Now, before I move on, I, I also want to say that um, we have we also want to have uh, the experienced, you know, the researcher of our college who is now with um, Global, I'm forgetting the name, Global Jindal, what is it called? Your institution, Vibhash? OP Jindal, ma'am. OP Jindal, OP Jindal. The, what is the full name? I'm forgetting the full name of the institution. Anyway, Vibhash can say it when, he's, when it is his turn to speak. So uh, we want to learn from your experience, Vibhash. Also, we are, I also want to say, you know, under TLC Ramanujan, we have meticulously and sincerely, you know, organized these programs. And we, that has actually contributed to our NAC 3.71 A++ score. And uh, all the teachers have worked so hard to uh, bring about good quality programs under TLC. But one thing I would like to mention to the participants here is like Parul uh, has already introduced you to the rules. So we have to uh, you know, maintain all these rules and regulations in our mind. We have to keep them in mind so that we attend all the programs sincerely. And one thing about online teaching I want to tell you is that when uh, you know, we all shifted during the pandemic to online teaching mode, you all may have faced similar issues because we were the teachers, as teachers, we were doing our best. But sometimes the students were not uh, you know, attending or sometimes just, uh, you know, attending for the namesake and not actually really in it. So this is a typical problem of online uh, method of teaching that we cannot actually handhold you. We can only introduce the topics. We can only provide uh, learning material and we can have experts from across the globe. But the learning part, the ownership has to come from the participant or the learner. So, you know, all of you have to sincerely attend all the, uh, you know, watch the videos that have been put, that will be put up for you each day. And you have to participate in all the activities. You have to follow the rules and regulations so that the quality of education is maintained. And you, uh, you come out after this 14 days program as an enriched and confident participant of this refresher course. We all want that you all should learn something. All of us, each day is a learning experience as teachers. For us, everything is a new learning experience. With everything that we do, we learn something from each other. So as a participant of this um, refresher course, I would request all of you to sincerely participate in this uh, 14 days program that have been so meticulously put up by the organizing team. I hope all of you will agree to me, agree with me, and those who are not listening, or not attending the inaugural right now, will be able to listen to this later, but still you have to go through the rules and regulations once again and attend the, um, attend the program sincerely and do all the um, activities and the quiz that we keep putting up for you. And in the final test, like Parul has mentioned, is also an important aspect so that you become eligible for the certificate. And once you do everything sincerely and meticulously, there is nothing that can stop you from getting a certificate for attending this refresher course. And you come out as an enriched participant. So I wish you a very enriching journey through these two weeks. And once again, I welcome the uh, guest of the day, Dr. Vipash Kumar, who was with us in Ramanujan College, a meticulous researcher and a very hardworking and systematic teacher. So we are all ears to listen to Dr. Vipash Kumar. Over to you, Parul. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for briefly outlining, outlining what are the do's and do's, don'ts for the program. And as ma'am rightly has put that all these things have to be meticulously done. And uh, I'm sure that it's going to be a learning experience for all of you at the end of these 14 days. And it would be an enriching experience. Uh, now, without much ado, 
uh, I would like to invite our guest for today, Dr. Vibhash Kumar. We are privileged to have him. Uh, before I invite him to address, I would take this opportunity to briefly introduce him to all the participants who have joined us. Uh, so Dr. Vibhash Kumar is currently working as an associ associate professor at Jindal Global Business School, Opal OP Jindal Global University. In his previous assignments, as ma'am has already said, Dr. Kumar has donned leadership roles as assistant directors of teaching learning center and course coordinator of national Resource Center, Ramanujan College. Uh, also, Dr. Vibhash has been the founding managing editor of RIJBR. It's a UGC care listed journal that is being run by Department of Commerce and Management Studies, Ramanujan College. Uh, Dr. Kumar holds a PhD in organizational behavior and human resource management from Department of Commerce, Delhi School of Economics. His research interests cover behavioral and emotional issues which are being faced by employees at workplace related to employee engagement, effective use of organizational resources, organization development interventions to augment the well-being of organization's employee. He has published several research articles in renowned publishing houses like Emerald, Springer, Sage, Indescience Publications, ABDC, Scopus, SSCI and Web of Science listed. Dr. Kumar reviews manuscripts for refereed journals of Springer and Sage publishers. He has presented research papers and won the best paper awards in national and international conferences in India as well as abroad. Dr. Kumar has been the editor on a special issue on leader in organization contemporary concerns and key developments in the International Journal of Business Globalization, which is also a Scopus Index journal in the year 2020. Uh, he has also contributed as an author for the Institute of Lifelong Learning, University of Delhi, EPG Patshala, sponsored by Ministry of Education for developing postgraduate teaching material, and the National Mission on Education project sanctioned by the Ministry of Education. He has also convened numerous FDPs, MDPs, conferences, and has conducted scores for faculty development programs and workshops on research methodology, academic writing, academic integrity and hands-on sessions on research tools in many prestigious institutions across the country, including Kolkata University, Hansraj College, SPM College, Shahid Bhagat Singh College, uh, Venkateshwar College, Institute of Home Economics, South Campus University of Delhi, Jamia Millia Islamia University, Christ University, Bangalore, James Names of IP University, and many more. Thank you, sir for finding time for us in this um, in this busy schedule of yours. We are privileged to have you and we want you to address the participants. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Parul, for this uh, you know, introduction. And at the outset, I would like to um, welcome all the participants. Um, before that, uh, the IQAC director, uh, Professor K. Lata. Uh, the program director of this um, FDP, um, Ms. Parul Yadav, the program convener, Ms. Ramya Jain, and all the uh, you know teaching members of uh, this FDP who are uh, making every effort to make this program a good, great success. Uh, obviously, not not mentioning uh, the, the support staff would not be good. So. Akhil and Sanchez. So we have been closely associated uh, with all of you. So I, I'm really thankful and it's a pleasure to come back again and talk about uh, some of the relevant things which will concern the educators um, of today. Uh, so I'm going to talk about those things, but thank you so much uh, Ramanujan College Department of Management Studies for having me here. Thank you so much. Um, to set the agenda, you know, uh, today, Basically, I'm not going to talk much about research, uh, but things which concern a teacher, an educator in academic, uh, in not just delivering, you know, courses or outlines or delivering knowledge to the students in the classroom, but also, you know, how to handling, managing their own schedule, their stresses, managing boundaries and so on and so forth. There are a lot of stuff which are going around uh, currently, which need to be addressed. And I believe those things are not taken up 
uh, rigorously and therefore i wanted uh, that to you know somehow been pictured around and given a voice so that uh, things uh, can be taken in the right stead so setting that agenda first thing first i'll be talking about um, the burnout or the stress which the you know teaching faculties as well as the entire fraternity is uh, facing post covid i would say and in general as well so i'll be talking and i'll be uh, you know shedding some light on some of the researches that i have done obviously so research comes into the picture here as well but uh, yes so yeah this will be an important enabling factor which uh, which i'll be sharing with all of you the research that i have done on this i'll be sharing that the second thing uh, which really plagues and you know this heartens a lot of uh, people in academia is that we you know perceive uh, that we we really need to hide our knowledge that we are having so it's about perceived knowledge hiding uh, not collaborating much with our faculty colleagues not talking much not having conversations so i i'll be talking about this again it is something which uh, concerns my research area so i'll be talking about this as well the third thing uh, which is equally very important and comes up when we talk about researchers in educational leadership is empathy so again uh, there's something which uh, really needs to be talked about uh, the leaders of educational institutes needs to be trained on this uh, if if and when uh, such things can be brought about so that it can really make the life very easy for the young faculty members who join this uh, fraternity uh, also you know equally important uh, will be some of the things like how do you you know deliver lectures to those students who are disinterested or disengaged uh, more so when uh, you know covid 19 came in i'm sure uh, the mightiest of the students or the you know sincere students or those students who are very conscientious would also you know not be paying attention uh, while we were delivering lectures online and now on the onset all of a sudden they have come and they have been you know made to sit for long hours for one hour lecture in physical mode so they have completely lost that touch and now they are disengaged and the impact is on the teachers and i'm sure those of you who are teaching and are part of this uh, faculty development program would agree that it is now a challenge to actually engage the students uh, post covid 19 so it, it's not it's not just about the students who are facing the difficulties equally we are talking about the teachers the educators who are managing those students in the classroom so what what needs to be done uh, is it okay if uh, you know things are not going the way we always wanted it to go as educators so what can be the survival packages here uh, that needs to be also discussed in close uh, you know affinity with what i'm just talking about here right now is also uh, something which uh, the accreditation agencies uh, across are talking about and it has become a part a very important part of uh, of an education system is what we call as the student feedback and you know the feedbacks from the students after a semester is done somehow if it's not good uh, it's negative from the perspective of of an academic uh, it severely dents the confidence of of the academics so what should be done what can be done about that uh, i'll be talking about that as well today so uh, these are the certain uh, agenda outlines that i really wanted to talk and share uh, with you and I'm, i'll be uh, after a while i'll be also taking your questions if that is permitted uh, but so uh, so yeah so let's begin with the first agenda here uh, the burnout in, among the academics so there can be a lot of reasons you know that why the academics are feeling stressed out one being yes publish or perish publication has come out to be something which is now considered to be almost a thing that you need to do 
to survive in this uh, uh, academic world. So that is there. But um, what about other things? You know, we have to be always available to the students. How we are uh, trying to uh, manage that kind of a scenario? Now, it looks to be easy. It looks that like, okay. It it looks like we should do it, but uh, if you agree or not, that is one of the stressors uh, for the teachers. I mean, being available to the students day in, day out, 24 into 7, and the students having phone number of the faculty members, uh, wherein they can call you up and you know put in their perspectives. So in a way, the students are feeling more entitled, and the teachers in that way are becoming more facilitators without really uh, so they are, in, in, in a way, jeopardizing their uh, health. So what needs to be done in this case, I would just quickly tell that for every educator, it's important to set your boundaries. Boundaries, time boundaries that needs to be set. Uh, you can always tell your students that you can communicate with, with me and you can always come up with uh, uh, you know questions and queries and doubts and helps and anything of that sort. But then it has to be uh, within a time frame. And that time frame, when you're talking about, you should be available to the students. So maybe fix up uh, a day in a week in which uh, you say that, okay, this time to this time, I'm freely available for you, you guys, and you can contact me over any preferred medium, maybe email or maybe on you know Teams or Zoom or anything of that sort. And you are giving full time and guidance to the students. In a way, that will help you managing the kind of hassles that uh, the teachers or educators are feeling nowadays. And I'm sure uh, this really concerns you because it's something which you are facing day in and day out. So uh, setting the boundaries, it's very, very important to manage your stress levels and uh, taking care of your uh, health also. The second thing, which is, uh, again, I would say it's a, a dark side of uh, technology or dark side of internet uh, and communication technology that uh, we have uh, the instant messaging applications with us, and it remains with us all the time. Uh, you accept it or not, my research says that it is called technological you know, uh, invasion, technological invasion, techno invasion in short. So technology is actually invading your personal life. What can be done in that regard? So one thing I did talk about is managing your you know, boundaries when you're talking to the students. Equally important is for every administration, uh, more so in educational administration, to take care, take note of this, voice it, that it's not, it's not appropriate, it's not ethical to reach out to the employees anytime and also seek replies you know, from them. Uh, at any time of the day. So it's it's completely all right to, you know, mail or message, but seeking immediate replies can lead to uh, burnout among the academics because in a way, you know, the boundary between personal life and the professional life is getting blurred. And with different personalities in, in education, uh, somebody who is more, say, conscientious and takes work very sincerely will uh, feel a pinch because the work is work has come and that work needs to be done. And therefore, it will constantly make the person anxious. Okay, so setting of the boundaries is absolutely very important. What kind of communication goes out from the, acad the, the administration of an institution is... Uh, and I would tell you that it is very important because it has now become a rule in Portugal to uh, absolutely have a date schedule which, which needs to be ad adhered to. The organizations need to be very careful about sending out work mails. And, and work mails is, even if it's correctly it's, and it's all right, you cannot expect the employee to work uh, which is beyond their time, time zone or the boundary that they have set. And this, this has to come consciously among institutions and organizations. And, and increasingly, you know, things like this are being researched upon. And um, after COVID, this, this became more prominent because that was the only way how you reached out to the employees, like instant messaging or emails. 
you were not meeting face to face there were no interactions so now it has been you know normalized to you know reach out to employees having meetings at odd hours and so on and so forth which can really lead to a uh, burnout among academics uh, so techno innovation needs to be taken care of you need to manage your time you need to set out your time clearly to the students when you should approach us and it's not that your availability is uh, throughout why i'm saying this is you know if you feel if academics feel that um, they have to continuously work and that work is going to help them in succeeding in their in their academic journey uh, then uh, there is a fallacy here many of the researchers who have been successful and have been also able to successfully lead, lead their personal lives you know say that the scarcest scarcest i mean things which are scarce the resources which are scarce in academics is is not the time it is the insight that we don't have or we are not thinking about so insight is that aha moment that that uh, phase when you feel like okay i have got something which is uh, which is going to revolutionize the world i mean you can research you can uh, the the insights drive your researches the insights that you have uh, help you in teaching effectively across the courses so insight is something which is scarce you know you don't get it you have to think about a lot you when you get your own personal time you you, you need to uh, think about it and then you get the insight so that's scarce and that needs to be propagated that needs to be managed uh, in fact um, time that means working throughout day in day out you know some of the senior professors keep on working uh, does it give a picture to the young uh, young professors that we we have to always work and the time that we have we have to always give for you know researching or teaching or making different courses no it's it's not important uh, and in this leads me to you know talking about uh, one of the most permanent uh, pertinent aspects which again is being neglected or we are not talking much about it and that's what we call as uh, knowledge sharing okay so uh, we don't share knowledge that that's there you know the kind or or the the intensity the level of it is low uh, across the domains that we see uh, so much so that we have uh, a construct called uh, knowledge hiding uh, instead of knowledge sharing we have a construct called knowledge hiding and what others feel that i am doing in terms of knowledge sharing or hiding is what we call as perceived knowledge hiding so i was talking about insight and how insight comes from uh, giving more time to yourself to your thought processes uh, to your cognitive uh, thoughts which comes in so uh, when we share information with our colleagues uh, we discuss things with our peers and it has nothing to only do with the research part of it it has also to do with uh, the day to day delivery of the lectures that we are talking about or maybe faculty members teaching the same course they can talk among themselves and they can share their insights they can share their teaching pedagogies and so on and so forth this is so important so critical which we miss uh, and I, i really appeal to each one of you that if you can take this forward you can share information it's something which is not a treasure that will be lost if you're sharing that information so you cultivate that training uh, and supportive relationship with some of your colleagues at least uh, who will help you uh, when you need the guidance because we all have our off days uh, when we will not be in our uh, zone to really do well so in that case it's important also you know uh, we take up lot of projects for our researchers lot of work is pending you know and i would say that not all the work requires insight or cognition that means you're not up and running your mind is not up and running for all the work that we do say for example uh, simple grading of the students or even looking at the class participation of the students all right uh, in in terms of research if we talk about uh, even the collection of the data or grading of the data or uh, you know data cleaning all these things need not have uh, so much of cognitive load that that we should uh, be always up and running so it's important that we trust our colleagues and share uh, in fact uh, you can delegate some of these works 
to maybe if you having if you having that kind of support from your organization uh, in terms of teaching support or teaching assistants you can share those information with them uh, also you know uh, if we can share such information with our young colleagues who are just entering into that field and learning trying to learn so if, if all these things can be done uh, it, it can really make life easy for all of us so knowledge sharing with peers doesn't only help the all others who are getting the knowledge but also for those who are sharing the knowledge okay so that's that's important uh, the third part of it uh, which i uh, really wanted to talk about is um, empathy uh, empathy is something which uh, should be there for an educator because that educator will become an academic leader later on so patience i would say and empathy are the two important things that are required uh, if you want to sane in a sane way if you want to manage the things uh, across uh, it not just helps you in uh, building and nurturing you know positive relationships at work it will also help you when you need that okay so why why i'm bringing empathy here because uh, you know we stop the entire transaction or interactions when our work is done okay we stop there and we don't even think about what others might need uh, mental health issues which are related to the students is coming up very frequently nowadays mental health issues are also now being prevalent among the academics okay it's not saying people don't share much because the academics are meant to take care guide you know others but what about they themselves okay so they are not coming out and it is taking them to that particular place where uh, there is no coming back so uh, for an academic leader to see if their team is working well you need to provide them with all the required support you need to give them a patient hearing and you also have to uh, see between the lines i mean what is really happening in their lives and that also goes but particularly for the students also because none of the students will tell you really come come up and say that okay i'm having a bad day or this is a troubling situation so all these things uh, if can be inculcated by the new age faculties that would really uh, help them in uh, creating themselves or managing themselves well in this profession uh the fourth part of uh, this which i wanted to talk about is how do you you know really uh, take care of disinterested or disengaged students for this i would just touch upon some of the things i'm sure uh, teaching learning center ramanujan college has a lot of uh, uh, video resources on these aspects uh, for for business and commerce uh, faculty members um, the one thing which really can help apart from lecturing you know if say for example i have 30 hour lectures to be taken in a semester um or 50 odd lectures to be taken in a semester i will know it from the very beginning that what i'm going to do uh, in these 50 lectures or these 30 courses uh, sorry these 30 days i i'll have to plan it out from the very beginning and i will make a judicious mix of lectures case studies experiential exercises and participant centered learning or anything which uh, you know encapsulates role playing or anything else i'll do it from the very beginning because Uh, i have to understand this that lecturing nowadays uh, to the students who are living in a world which is completely dynamic and is full of knowledge through all the resources that you are having in fact while you are talking in the classroom the students will have uh, internet access to lot of information that you are talking about so you can be you know crossed uh, in that as well so uh, the learning and and the way the students have actually adopted this process of e learning is um, and this also forms part of our um, nep if if you look into closely what what are the things happening so it's important that we are ready for this so what i what i really advise here is that uh, instead of just focusing on the lecturing part for a good one hour one and a half hour sessions it's important that we make a judicious mix of uh, different uh, uh, ways of you know teaching because uh, to be on a safer side i'll say 5 to 10 minutes is is the time period when the student is actually listening to you in at one go 
and, and later on, you know, they are thinking about something else. They are not with you. So the attention span, which we call, is very less nowadays. And therefore, it needs to be, uh, as an educator, you need to uh, you need to narrate stories. You need to bring the real world things out there. You have the internet at your disposal. You have PowerPoint pre presentations that you can use to show some videos or maybe some simulation exercises or role plays. In fact, uh, why not to make the students uh, you know, an active participant. In fact, when we discuss cases with the students, it's a precedent to share with them the cases that this is the case that we are going to talk about in the next class and, uh, and uh, this is how you're going to be prepared. It's also equally important that we have, you know, group level activities uh, with these students because uh, simply having coming and delivering lectures doesn't really help. And, and this has to be a, a common thing which happens in your course and you need to do it from the very beginning you have to uh, right before the semester starts everything needs to be done and this will help you immensely because you will know on which date you're going to take up what thing and what are your resources that are available to you in fact it would be great if you can share all those resources with the students beforehand because um, at that stage students will be able to uh, you know, look into those resources and come back prepared and then you can have a healthy discussion. Uh, that way there can be a lot of engagement. Uh, uh, so, you know, the onus definitely is not just on the students, uh, on the teachers to share the information. The onus also lies on the students. But uh, this is our job, you know, to make the students also aware about things and so that they take responsibilities uh, to, uh, you know, learn from what is being taught in the class. So, um, so that is important because modern day educators need to be resilient because it's all about survival today. I'm telling you, uh, it's important. We have to go on, as said by Curtis Mayfield, uh, keep on keeping on. So it's like uh, you have to go on, you have to work around, you have to see what, what you can do to make things work for you and how effective you can be in delivering the lecture. So I, I just wanted to share this important aspect here. And the last part of it, uh, which, which really concerns all of us, is the student feedback. In fact, some of the teachers also oppose it because um, it can be that some of the disgruntled students give you bad feedback because you were you know, somehow harsh with them while you were commenting on their work, their assignments, or the overall conduct. Uh, and, and I would say that Teachers need to be really brave in, in this aspect. Uh, feedbacks, one or two, may come out to be bad, but if you're ensuring fairness in terms of um, you know, how you're dealing with your class, how you're teaching, uh, it, these feedbacks really won't make an impact because you know it's all about embracing the bad. Embracing the bad because not all positive things are considered to be good. So if you're getting all good, uh, you know, um, responses from the students maybe your your lectures are not so much uh, interactive or not giving some kind of insight it's just plain and simple uh, which the students uh, are, the students are not being made to come out of their comfort zones and, and therefore they are okay with it you know some of the students also complain that the lectures are not structured so for that i just give you a, a good solution that you can prepare your 30 day you know course uh, what you're going to do every day and what resources you're going to share with the students that you, if you do it uh, right from the very beginning, things will be and easily can be taken off. Uh, also, you know, uh, and this thing which I feel I always do is that I don't always stick to the syllabus which is prescribed for, for the students to learn because it's ultimately about also divergent thinking and critical thinking which uh, comes with a lot of deliberation. So it's not just about sticking with all the syllabus. Uh, it's also moving out. So students will say that, okay, you're not sticking to the syllabus in the feedback, but it, it really doesn't make much of a difference because at the end of the day, the ultimate benefactor is the student because the student is getting a lot of learning out of it. So uh, in a nutshell, if if I have to you know, talk about uh, what we said today is the first one as in what should be done by the uh, employers, the organizations in terms of what can be uh, the role that the employer will play in maintaining that sanity 
among the teachers you know not pushing them to that extent where they are losing their uh, you know capability to think clearly so uh, the burnout or the stress they are facing because of uh, you know highest level of technological innovation uh, is not helping anybody because when i took this i just asked this questions uh, to 1500 odd teachers you know they had this thought that during the covid times they say that we never had sundays uh, we did not know what is a break we did not know what is a holiday because we are always uh, you know being asked questions we have to report uh, and we have to provide evidences so it's important for organization to consciously take decisions in this regard that okay we are going to be the best uh, we are going to follow the best practices and this is what we are going to do and maybe bring out a white paper note on that that okay these are the things that we do and these are things which are absolutely uh, a no go area for we uh, for us so that will really help um, the academics and uh, uh, the educators to focus on uh, what needs to be delivered and when also teachers need to you know set boundaries when they are uh, interacting with the students the times uh, and and the and the days in which you are going to really help the students uh, can be fixated beforehand that will give a structure to the students also and uh, they will not you know come out just out and say that okay uh, please help me out of nowhere you know obviously there can be exigencies which needs to be taken or catered to uh, so yeah uh, that can that type of uh, you know flexibility can also be offered uh the second part which i talked about was about knowledge sharing uh, it's important to share knowledge not just related to the researches that you are doing in fact have collaboration among your peers um, those who are with you day in and day out this will help you in building up collegiality uh, also in fact discussing difficulties uh, uh, about tackling a particular course or students can really be very very helpful in fact if you share knowledge uh, you will see that you also have a different perspective uh, when there will be more deliberations you will get different perspectives uh, different shares uh, thoughts will be shared and uh, this will be a win win situation for all of us uh, the third part is obviously empathy for the educational leadership which needs to be again it is a conscious uh, thing that needs to be done uh, and needs to be propagated also the fourth part is you know delivering lectures how do you deliver lectures to disengaged students and the fourth uh, the fifth part is obviously how to handle uh, feedbacks which are uh, not very good uh, but you don't have to be scared about it you have to be brave you go on uh, taking your structured lectures the way you are taking uh, maybe one of good or bad uh, feedbacks here and there do not make uh, much of a difference because people who are the administrators who are actually analyzing these feedbacks will also know what transpires in the minds of the students so that's that from my side uh, thank you so much if you have any questions i am happy to take it please akil can you just see if you've got any questions on the youtube link uh, no ma'am mostly good morning messages and uh, participants and posting that uh, very refreshing session so mostly these kind of messages are there okay thank you akil uh thank you dr vibhash uh if you give me an opportunity i would like to put forth a question uh right. because um, you know what you delivered and how you've addressed they are basic problems which we generally take as small issues and we tend to neglect them but those small steps actually help us in uh, you know making our lives more comfortable and i would say scheduling it so thank you so much uh, my question to you is regarding the kind of pedagogy that we adopt in the class so we have often seen that even um, you know sometimes if we go to the simple method of chalk and board and lecturing obviously you've rightly said that it becomes very monotonous and there's lots of information which is being delivered to the students but it has also been seen uh, you know it's a personal experience that even if we go for let's say other exercises or let's say we go for group discussions or simulation exercises and if we do, do not give any kind of theory to the students at that point of time or any kind of concrete information 
they feel that the class has not given anything substantial to them so how do we tackle uh, you know things like that should we just go on with the kind of methodology that we adopt or do we have to incorporate like divide our class half in kind of an exercise and half like theory no, yeah it's very good yeah that that last part that you said uh, really answers your question uh, i mean it it has not to it has to be have a structure right even if you're going for a group discussion it has to have a structure so you need to um, make groups you can give them a case or a case lead you make groups you give each group a question that question needs to be you know taken up they can use any uh, recourse internet or otherwise they can always look into it make it structured present it in the classroom and while they are presenting you know while the presentation is going on the other groups can come in chip in and they can you know uh, give their suggestions on that now as a what is the role of an educator here so you have to manage that uh, particular thing and you will also have to see what theories or what learning outcome that you wanted to you know uh, picture here uh, that it's being delivered to the student are they being talked about by the students maybe they will not give a name of, of the theory which needs to be talked about but they will somehow you will see uh, talk about some things which are very near to what is to be addressed and that is when you uh, as an educator needs to jump in and say that okay this is what we are talking about this is the theory that we are trying to and then maybe some uh, anecdotes and some thought process regarding that theory uh, as an extension to what has already been done will help them in knowing that okay this is the part uh, which we had to learn in our course and now we are learning it through this way and I, i'm sure you know i'll tell you with my experience students don't forget these things much because they have themselves worked on it uh, they'll critically ask you even questions regarding this and so it's it's a win win situation for both both of us yeah yes thank you so much i think this uh, would be and a there is a approach. question uh, parul there is yes. a question on yes ma'am i got one question uh, from the participant oh. yeah yeah maybe yeah. you can take it up yeah the question level in students yeah. yes the question is from samia sharfuddin uh, and her question is how to handle stress level amongst the students okay okay so it's a it's something which is impending impending and it's coming to us and we as educators are also considered that we will guide the students on this so uh, many of the students many of the educational institution these days have uh, these uh, you know societies or counseling groups uh, in in their institutions as well so now the first thing is that how do you identify such students okay so uh, it's important to lay down some important uh, aspects during your initial classes you know about the safe environment that you're going to create at 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 the classroom level and what when can the students approach you for different aspects so we have um, at general uh, business school we have uh, this you know committees wherein we have uh, one student is being mentored by a faculty and it's like they have been assigned that uh it's not just mentor mentee kind of a thing it's it's also about weekly meetings uh, if if the student feels like you can come to the teacher and talk about uh, what really is stressing you uh, related to the studies or outside or beyond it so maybe uh, that kind of safe environment first needs to be created so that the student comes and talks about what is really bothering them uh, in terms of stress uh, also um, you know uh, institutionalizing that part wherein if the student really comes to you for any issue which can be personal or study related you are not putting an end to it yourself because you may not be qualified uh, to take up uh, with the stress issues or the levels of stress which the students are experiencing so there has to be an institutional committee or a, uh, you know a psychologist who, who needs to be really uh, uh, come in the picture so so it's it has to be you know level wise uh, structured approach to managing stress among the students um, you can have sessions from the psychologists uh, every now and then about what really bothers the students in general but specific causes like anxiety related to uh, thoughts mental pressures hassles um, can really be talked about one to one with the psychologist but uh, here the teachers can be the facilitators because 
uh, at least that safe environment is being created uh, that the students come to the teachers to talk about uh, their problems and then this that subsequently is being also tackled because the, the words go out you know it, it goes out that how the institution is taking care of uh, the students in this way so um, one or two cases if it's done well i think uh, we will really be able to help our students well rightly said sir i think that answers the question in fact uh, the solution also because generally in education institutions we adopt a mentimenti system but i think going beyond and just uh you know not only we have to consider the counseling aspect but other aspects in totality would actually help in reducing the stress um we don't have any other question sir but there are number of uh, comments regarding how the good and insightful the session has been so thank you so much once again for delivering and addressing the participants for this refresher program uh i would now like to invite uh, ms ramya jain she is the convener of the program to deliver the formal vote of thanks am out yes ma'am it's 12 o'clock to propose a vote of thanks on this special location Principal Ramanujan College for his constant motivation and support to organize such. Are they still together? Uh, am I audible now? Uh, there was some yes, issues from yes, my yes, yes. It's better. Okay. Uh, thank you is such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched. It can be felt by heart. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this special occasion. I would like to thank our guest, Dr. Vibhash Kumar, for taking out time from his busy schedule and enlightening our participants with his vast experience and knowledge. Thank you so much, sir. My sincere thanks to Professor S. P. Agarwal, Principal Ramanujan College, for his constant motivation and support to organize such refresher courses for the benefit of all. My words are not enough to express our gratitude to Professor K. Lata, Director IQAC, who has been a guiding star in shaping the course. Thank you so much, ma'am. An event of this dimension cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling months in advance. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by highly motivated and dedicated organizing board. I thank our program director, Dr. Parul Yadav, who stood by us and motivated us in organizing this course. I thank you so much, ma'am. And I would also like to thank our technical heads, Dr. Weppin and Dr. Nikhil, who has actually created this LMS platform, which we would be using or which we are using for uh, providing you with all the study material and for conducting all your assignments and research uh, and all your uh, quizzes that would be conducted. I would also like to thank our, all the organizing members, Dr. Abhishek, Dr. Arpi, and Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, who has been working day and night to make this event a success and to provide all the support to our participants so that they can carry out their course effectively. I would also like to thank our organizing team 
who has been providing technical support, Mr. Akhil, Mr. Prashant, Mr. Sanchit, Mr. Anil, and Mr. Vinod, who has been working at the back end and providing with all the technical support which is required. So thank you so much. And it has been a pleasure listening to you, sir. And thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you to you, to Ramya, for coordinating and managing everything. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you once again, all of you, for joining the session. And we've got one session which is lined up in the evening at 4. It would be a live session. So I request all the participants to join that session too. Thank you. Akhil, maybe Thanks, we can everyone. stop the stream. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, can I stop the live live streaming?